Okay, everyone. In this class, we are going to go and start discussing the ideas about forces. And we will start by discussing about what are the forces, how we can classify them, different types of forces. And one of the important things in these first few classes is how do we visualize forces? Really, really important. And it connects to the idea of drawing force diagrams or the free body diagrams. We will take time to discuss about that. And when we have these tools ready, we are going to start discussing samples and problems with the Newton's laws important. Newton's second law is the one we will deal with the most of the situations with these examples. As an example, if we have a situation, there's a box, someone is pushing it, there's an applied force F, what is the acceleration? So thinking about the box, similar to what we have done so far, we can apply Newton's second law, the net force equals mass times the acceleration. These are vectors. This is the net or the total force. We will discuss more and more examples in class. And remember, everyone, whenever you are dealing with these Newton's second law problems, this acceleration, this guy is a vector. This is related to all the motion equations. These forces or the net force is acting on an object. Objects are in motion. We talked about V final equals V initial plus acceleration time. V final equals squared V initial squared formula. And delta X equals V initial X time. The formula, the acceleration right here, this guy is the same as the acceleration right here. So the motion equations, constant acceleration motion equations are still related in these problems, examples with the Newton's law problems. Okay, so moving forward, the first thing we need to be careful, visualizing forces. We have different types of forces we discuss in this class. Could be gravitational forces and the normal force, no matter if the object is on an incline or on a flat surface. We will talk about both spring forces, tension, the ropes come in, and also the friction. When the object is in no motion, we talk about the static friction, could be on a flat surface or in an incline. Also, when the object is in motion, we will talk about kinetic, kinetic friction. In all situations like that, visualizing forces right here, forces, forces, we have to draw forces acting on objects. If there is a table, here we go, we have a box sitting on the table. We will talk about the center of mass, mass center, force of gravity, F, force of gravity, Fg, that is equal to mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, D. And on this mass center by the table acting on the object, there will be a normal force. We will go in detail, we are using just the initial idea. We are still using arrows to represent these vectors, the forces, no matter if it is a force of gravity or the normal force. We will do examples, getting you ready for that. Why we need this guy? What's the importance? Whenever you are going to talk about the Newton second law, you are dealing with forces. You need to identify what is the net force in order to find the unknown acceleration. We need to be careful about visualizing our forces acting on the object. Even when you go through the textbook, you will have these problem solving strategies. In those strategies, first one is draw a representation. You are doing this sketch for each and every problem we have so far. And include all the forces acting on the objects. 
that's one thing we definitely have to do. And again, later, we can talk about X component of the forces, Y component of the force. The idea here, if net equals mass times the acceleration, we can put this guy, apply Newton's second law along the X direction. We could say, net force along the x direction equals mass times the acceleration along the x. y direction, if net along the y direction equals mass times the acceleration along y. So we are going to go two dimension problems applying the Newton's second law along x along y direction. How come? In this type of a situation, if there is a box sitting on a table flat surface, done really easy. Force of gravity or mg, sometimes people have the v, w, force of gravity. And force of normal, fn, sometimes people have the n. This is a picture, a photo screenshot from the textbook, done, acting on the object, really easy object is stationary in this situation, and we can deal with that later in examples. Sometimes we have examples similar to these. There is a box on a table. Now, not only X, again, if I return to this problem, we could say this guy is in, not in motion, but if we were to push this guy, we can think about object is moving upward or along the surface. This is where the x hat, y hat directions come in to these examples. Similar to that in this situation, if this person is moving downward, this is the motion. We could say this is the acceleration direction. We could pick, I am going to pick, this is my x hat direction. This is my y hat direction perpendicular to the surface. That's my y direction. This is where we need F equals MA along the X direction, along the Y direction. So first we start by the situation. We label all the forces. We have an inclined surface. Here is our object. No matter if it is a box, if it is a person, there we go. We have our object. Always we start by this force of gravity. And again, you can start anywhere, but force of gravity, always obvious it is there, force of gravity. By the surface acting on the object, here we go force of normal, perpendicular to the surface. We will go through the class in detail. This is just getting you started, what to look for. And if this object is moving along the downward direction, let's say, this is the acceleration direction opposite to the motion. Always there's going to be friction, force of friction. No matter this guy or this one, this is the same scenario, a force diagram. You could label the forces acting on the object force diagram, or you could go with this particle version, the center of mass, all the forces acting on force of gravity, normal force, friction force. Either way is fine. Then you have to figure out, okay, so this is your X direction. You are going to apply Newton's second law along the X direction. This is my Y direction. You are going to apply F equals MA along the Y direction. This is where you need to be careful about X component, Y component. Again, guys, I'm talking about this X component, Y component of the force of gravity. This guy right here, force of gravity, we will talk about how to get the Y component along the negative Y direction right here. Force of gravity along the Y direction, but again, this guy is negative Y. This was the positive Y direction force of gravity along the X direction. This component, you guys, whenever we know the angle, if we know this angle theta, this will be force of gravity times cosine theta. You are expert, experts of this now. 
This one right here, force of gravity X component is equal to force of gravity times sine theta. We will do examples in the class. We will start from this scratch on this Monday's class and moving forward. Okay.